Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. When you're going into a, a film, what is your pre-production process? I mean, do you do you rehearse with actors? Because I know some directors love long rehearsals. Other directors want it on the day. How do you how do you pre? How, what's your pre-production process? You know, it, uh, it's evolved over the years. And for me personally, I, when I started out, I would have rehearsals and stuff. And a lot of times, it's awkward because people show up, they don't know each other, and I and ultimately, I. I've come to realize that for me, the most valuable thing about rehearsal is not so much learning the lines and stuff. It's really getting to know the other people. Mm. It's, it's creating a rapport, uh, and a bit of a shorthand before you show up on the set. So you're just not like showing up with strangers. It's really getting to know each other. You know, yeah, you'll sit there and you talk about the characters and you explore them and, You'll do scenes and stuff, but I think it's ludicrous to expect that whatever whatever performance level you achieved in rehearsal is going to be the same thing you get two months later when you're actually doing it on the floor right. because things evolve. And that to me is the, is the greatest benefit of rehearsal is simply getting to know the actors and letting them get to know you, um, you know, so that you're there's a familiarity before you start to do it. It's easier to talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that that's what I like about it. Now, there's some actors that, that really like to rehearse to a T. I respect that. You know, that's what they need. Every actor needs something different. And others hate rehearsal. They don't want to do it. They just want to show up on the day. And I get that too. And I think personally, that's kind of where I am. I prefer to just discuss the characters, maybe try some things, but don't say, okay, that's it. That take right there, the way you played it, that's it. That's how we're going to do it three months from now. That's BS. And I've also learned, and in, in performance-wise, on the set, when you're doing a scene, I don't like to rehearse too much before you shoot. I like to block it so everybody kind of knows where you're supposed to go, and you kind of get a loose rhythm. And, and I encourage people, when you're rehearsing on the day of the shoot, to not get up to performance level. I just say, let's just loosely block this and figure out where you're going to be. Because invariably what I find is uh, you burn out and you can spend a couple hours rehearsing something and they'll give you their good stuff. And then it comes time to shoot and they've already given it to you. So I like to hold it back as much as possible until you actually roll cameras. I prefer to rehearse on camera because mm-hmm. you never if, know, you know, again, every actor is different. Some actors show up and they're just exploding. You know, they've been thinking about it all night and they're ready to go. And within the first three or four takes, they've given you the best stuff. So if you rehearse, you know, six, eight times, you've lost it. There are other actors that show up and they need a lot of coffee because they're not even remotely there. And it may take them the better part of the day to get up to performance level. They need to do it a lot. And so as a director, you've got to recognize these differences in them. And so the guy that's right there from the get go, that's who you want to cover first, you know, mm-hmm. and the guy that's going to build into it. You want him off camera for half the day until you turn around and start to shoot him. It's just, you know, it just comes from experience. It's just you learn these things about working with people and you have to respect everybody's got their own way. And so you're, you're trying to make all those different ways jive for what you're trying to do. It's kind of like what the what that the director told you in film school. This is the, the most difficult job in the world. <laughs> he was right. It, he was, you know, and it's like <laughs> another thing I tell people, I, I think 50 percent of directing is just having the willingness to subject yourself to the process mm. because it's not everybody can do it and and to get through it you have to want to do it you really have to want to go through that process i mean it you know like it's not like combat or anything like that something horrible Mm -hmm. but it's strenuous it's very strenuous and uh you you kind of have to put yourself in that place and be willing to run the gauntlet you know to get there because it is if you do it right i think Mm -hmm. there's some people that just sit back and just let it happen and don't 
put themselves into it too much. But I don't I don't think I, I think the product is affected by that. It's not it is not for the weak hearted, uh, you know, um, or weak willed, to say the least. Uh, there's so many directors I've known over the years that I've got, I've got my start in post-production. So I had directors sitting on my couch while I edited and color graded and did all this stuff. And you see it, you see the personalities, you see like this guy ain't going to make it. This was the, and I've had many directors who got that one shot. They got their Fandango, they got their Fandango. And then they're like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go back to being a lawyer. This is not for me. And then there's other ones that like are just, just in the mud. And you're like, he's going to make it or she's going to, she's going to keep going. <laughs> It's yeah, it's crazy. It's you have to be a little crazy. You really do. <laughs> I don't know why this story. Uh, if I can digress for a moment. Sure, sure. Story, the guy who was uh, my producer on Fandango, Tim Zinnemann, great guy. And Tim had been an AD for a long time. He worked on a lot of shows, <laughs> and I won't say which show, but he worked on this one in the South Pacific that was just a disaster. Mm -hmm. The Dino De Laurentiis thing. And, uh, you know, the cast was crazy and he had actors that would show up in Dino's office and rip their clothes off and scream at him and stuff. And anyway, the director was just losing it. And, and he said one day, you know, the, the call was like seven or something. Everybody shows up and they can't find the director. They're on an island. They're on an island. And it, they wait and they wait and they wait and can't find him. And Tim finally just starts walking around the island. It's not that big. He's looking for the guy. He's not in his quarters or whatever. Finally, he walks around the island like half an hour, and on the far side of the island, he finally finds this guy sitting in the sand, looking through binoculars at crab. <laughs> he lost it. He had lost it. Just completely lost it. Gone. Wow. That's like a Terry Gilliam film. <laughs> like, that's something I would see. <laughs> you know, you just... Yeah, you know, you don't want to get to that place. You have to be stupid enough to think you're right and, and stupid enough to think, I'm going to power through this. I can do this, you know, and that, uh, uh, you know, if other people can do it, I can do it. Because if you start to doubt yourself, you're dead. You oh, may no. be wrong, but if you doubt yourself, you're dead. Absolutely. To watch the rest of this interview, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com.